Okay. Well, hello. Um, I'm Beverly Kelling. I'm the pastor here at St. Paul Lutheran Church, and I'm glad that you are joining us again for another uh, Wednesday night Come As You Are service. To let you know, um, the, the plan is that next week will be our last recorded uh, Come As You Are service, and then actually the first Wednesday in June, we're going to go ahead and open it back up to live services here, and we'll, we will adhere to some of the distancing and some of the precautions and everything that we have been asked to do. Um, but since we are going to go live on Wednesdays, um, we will discontinue um, posting the, the services online, the Wednesday services online. Sunday, we're still going to be able to do the live stream, and we'll have it posted there, so just know that. And then also I'm really actually excited because uh, next week also we're going to have Coach uh, Brett Ratcliffe come and, and, and give a talk um, before he heads on to his new adventure. So we are excited about that. Would you join me in a prayer as we get started in this? Heavenly Father, you are good. You are purposeful. You are the one that guides us. You are the one that tells us to be aware and to be watchmen on the wall. And so, Father, um, even though truly tonight I am speaking beyond things that I can completely comprehend, Father, I pray that this does serve as a warning, that, that it is something that um, people will look into for themselves. And even as they do research things, Lord, um, I pray that it will bring people not, not a fear but just a confidence and a trust and that people would run to you uh, for your safety, your security, your provision, and for all that you have for us. And so I give you this talk tonight, Lord, and I just trust that you're going to help it to, um, to make sense. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I know that as a pastor, you're usually not supposed to ever tell people that you really feel uncomfortable giving a talk, but I can tell you for tonight, this is probably one of the times that I'm most uncomfortable giving talks. If you know me well, um, you will know I am not tech savvy. But a lot of things have been happening, um, especially over the last few weeks. And even though I'm not tech savvy with some of these things, I will do my best. But what I am called to do is to lead to shine the light and to show truth where I can and, and to be a watchman on the wall. And what the watchman on the wall used to do is they would, they would be on the wall uh, outside of, of Israel and Jerusalem and just they would look and see and if they saw danger coming, they would blow the trumpets and let people be aware. So this is my version of blowing a trumpet and, and letting you be aware of some of the things that, that are going on. Also know with this, it is not comprehensive at all. One, it, it simply can't be. There's, there's just too many factors and too many organizations and too many people involved. So what this is going to be is just a little bit of a taste of, of some of the things going on. And again, I encourage you, if this is something that interests you, that you, you investigate it some yourself. And, and I'm glad to hear things that you, that you find. Um, but this is just a, a sm a tip of the iceberg of some of the information that I've um, been able to get across. Okay, so why am I giving this big introduction to this? Well, because really over the past week, I had several people tell me, and I saw it myself, about this new patent that um, had come across. And on March 26, um, 2020, the patent number WO2020 060606 was published. And it is a Microsoft patent for cryptocurrency. Now, if you, part of the challenge with this is learning some of the, the words that are being used and the definitions for it. Crypto means hidden. Currency, we know currency is something that you deal with, whether it's money or something that you can barter with or something that you can get some kind of service for or get some kind of payment for. And so Microsoft did this patent for this cryptocurrency. And what caught people's attention was the patent number of 060606. The reason why that caught people's attention is because in Revelation 13 verses 16 through 18 it says, and this was talking about the beast, about the Antichrist, 
And he requires everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on his right hand or his forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he had the mark, the beast's name or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. The one who has understanding must calculate the number of the beast because he is the number of man. His number is 666. So what is this that has caught many people's attention? This is a, a, a graph of it, a diagram of it, and, and I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to go into detail on this. But basically what this is, is that people would be implanted with some type of chip. And we have heard the, that the chip may be in some type of the vaccines that are being uh, promised out there. And this chip would be implanted in someone. And what this chip does then, it actually records a person's actions and of course what they do. It, it also can come from other people and kind of program in what it wants you to do. And you might say, that, okay, that sounds kind of far-fetched, but I'm gonna use the example as I know of some people that um, on their phone even have an app that if they do a certain amount of exercise a week, that they get Starbucks money. So they're rewarded for what they are doing and it's being input into some information. This is kind of the concept behind this chip, that it would be within the person, and you could, it could be programmed, so to speak, to, to uh, condition people ways to act. And if they acted according to those ways, if they reached those goals, they would get some type of like cryptocurrency. They would get a reward for it. And if they didn't, then they actually wouldn't get the reward. And so basically what this is, it would be a way for people that are willing to get implanted with this because most everybody likes free stuff where they go, well, I'll do that if it means I can get this. And one of the people that I read, and I thought it was, it was a good way to illustrate it, it said it's like where Fitbit meets Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is that cryptocurrency that's out there. Now, what it basically will do then is this artificial intelligence server tells us to do what we're supposed to do, and if we do it right, you get rewarded with this cryptocurrency. And this again is the concern that some people are having with the vaccine. So here is something actually out of Rice University here in Texas, and it gives an illustration. It shows what this vaccine can do. It's not the vaccine that we're used to necessarily where we get a shot in the arm. This is a vaccine that would actually be put in, and once it is in, if you can see on the very right-hand side, there is an image that is still left. And this would be the image that would be the implant that you would have. Now, how this works out is, this isn't something that's brand new, it's just something that all of a sudden the patent has come out that we are being made aware of. But back in May 2016, at the United Nations headquarters in New York, the inaugural ID 2020 summit brought together over 400 people to discuss how to provide this digital identity to everyone. It was a defined, uh, sustainable development goal where experts in blockchain, and blockchain is a recording, it's kind of the record keeping of cryptocurrency. So again, there's a lot of new terminology to learn on this, but it's a way that they are recording the currency that you are earning, okay? Now this sustainable development goal is something that we've actually talked about before. This is the, the world goal, and it has 17 goals to transform our world. And one of the very first things on there is to not to have poverty, which really no one wants poverty, but it goes from not having poverty, it goes to you wanna have food with everyone, you wanna have equal health care. you wanna have social justice, you wanna have all these things, environmental safety. And anytime, I'm gonna tell you now, anytime you hear the word sustainable, that is a red flag. Because what sustainable means is 
for a world to pull together and say, okay, if we're going to sustain our food supply, that means that we're going to have to kind of monitor who gets what. If we're going to sustain the environment, that means that we can't use this kind of environment, but we're going to have to use this kind of environment, or we're going to have to make sure that, um, that nobody's overusing what they're allowed to use. And even when they're talking about this um, no poverty, what that also means is, okay, well, you're not in poverty, you are. We're going to have where um, we keep it equal on who gets what money. And so we can see that this is something that would indeed transform our world. And it is something, too, that the book of Revelation warns us about as far as a one world government, a one world economy, and then one world religion. And so, again, this is why this new patent has caught a lot of people's attention. Now, in September of 2015, the United Nations adopted this 2030 Sustainable Development Goals, which stressed its commitment to provide legal identity for all, um, including birth registration, by 2030. So what that tells us is, over these next 10 years, we're going to be hearing a lot about this. And it's going to be something that's going to be becoming more and more prevalent. Now, some of the things it talks about is when it talks about the, the core requirements of this digital ID, they call it the, poor, the four P's, that it's private, that it's portable, meaning it can go with you wherever you go. So obviously you're going to have to be able to carry it with you some way, and what better way than on yourself or in yourself. It's got to be persistent, and their definition of persistent is basically from birth to death. So it's going to cover your whole lifetime. And it's going to be personal, meaning that no one else is going to have that same identity code that you do. So no one's going to be able to take your identity. But what that also means is everything that is identified with you is going to come back to you. So there's a couple of other um, organizations, and again, there, there are so many that I'm really going to touch on just three for tonight. Um, and I know this is small to read, but I, I, as best as I could, I did not want to get from other news sources. I wanted to actually go to websites of the organizations themselves to see what they said. So on these, I have N, uh, NEC, Simprints, which actually we're not going to discuss them tonight. We're going to do Microsoft instead. And then uh, Gavia, or Gavi, that, um, that we're going to talk about. All right. And these are covering with this biometrics. Biometrics, again, mean body, and metrics mean some type of digital thumbprint on you. All right. And so what this is, talks about, it talks about they're, they're going to use biometrics, this, this implant of some kind, and if I've highlighted some of the red things where it talks about who they partner with, but it has the opportunity to leverage biometrics to help millions of the most vulnerable children worldwide. What they're saying with this, it sounds good initially, but what they are saying is they're using this, and I say they, a lot of things, powers that be. What is being used here is everyone's desire to save children. And we want them to have vaccines, and we don't want any children to die. And so what they're saying is, is that we need to have some type of biometric, some type of, of implant in them so we could actually see who's gotten vaccines, who hasn't, and we can follow them throughout their whole lifetime. And again, initially that sounds good if you trust the people that are doing it all the time. All right? And then it talks about at the very end, it says, um, it's already starting in Bangladesh and uh, Tanzania by early 2020. Um, and if successful, it will progress to linking children's digital identities with their vaccination records. So this is where this whole idea of a digital identity, a digital implant of some kind, is going to be put with children's vaccinations. So this, this partnership was developed um, between this, it's GAVI, GAVI, NEC, and then the simple prints to use the biometrics to improve the vaccine coverage in developing nations. Now, what actually is biometrics? Well, biometrics is it's defined as a physical or behavioral human characteristic that can be used to digitally identify a person 
to grant access to systems, devices, or data. So instead of you going to the doctor, instead of you going anywhere and saying, giving the whole record of your history, what they can basically do is scan you and it would pop up of who you are and what you've had and it gets into, um, it starts with, with your healthcare. Examples of ways that biometrics are used. One are the fingerprints, and you think about that even on your phone a lot of times. You can just put your fingerprint on there and your computer on there, and it recognizes who you are. That's a biometric. It also does it by facial recognition. And we've seen that at different places too, that they can just look at your face, including your forehead, and they will um, be able to recognize you. And then obviously is one of the ones too, is voice recognition. So who is NEC? Well, one of the things that NEC is, is they are one of these companies that is, is a catalyst for, for this uh, global sustainable development that they're looking at, okay? And it talks about the seven themes for social value creation. And if you, and if you notice on here, the very first thing is sustainable earth. And again, that's what we talk about, what that encompasses is food, environment, um, uh, population, all those things is what's considered sustainable earth. That we have to make it where we don't deplete everything as the human race. Um, and to make the earth sustainable to contain the population, which means for a lot of people that, that there's gonna have to be a reduction in the population. So again, anytime you hear sustainable, um, just take note of that, okay? And then you see with all of this, it really takes encompassing everything. There's nothing that is not affected in our lives that this would be a part of. Um, safer cities and public services, lifetime infrastructure, communication, industry, eco ecosystem, work style, and quality of life. So their website though, the NEC group globally provides solutions for society that promote the safety, security, efficiency, and equality of society. The website continues under this company's corporate message of orchestrating a brighter world. NEC aims to help solve a wide range of challenging issues and to create new social value for the changing world of tomorrow. Again, some of these sound all great, but if I may share, we already have our value as a child of God. We don't need another company. We don't need the world telling us what our value is. We have value simply because we are made in the image of God. Now, as I was looking through their website, there were several things that caught my attention, but this one in particular, and it's the one I wanted to share with you because I want you to see how something that really should catch our attention is made to sound like this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, okay? This was a cartoon that they had. And it was, you see a family walking into their house and it said, what if you could use your face as a digital key? And then the story goes, the family arrives at their new home, biometric authentication makes life easy here too. The daughter says, you unlock the door with your face? Cool. The dad says, that's right. So we're never losing the keys again. And the mom says, that's not all. I can pay with face recognition too. And anywhere in the world too. Dad says, no more loose change credit cards or confusing foreign currencies. So what does that sound like? It sounds like a cashless society. And again, the Bible predicts something like that will come, where if that you are not recognized, if you do not have that, that mark of the beast on your right hand or on your forehead, hence the facial recognition, that basically you're not gonna be able to buy, sell, trade, do anything. You're not gonna be able to do anything. And this is already coming on our doorstep. Now, this gave and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I admit, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. What that is, is the a vaccine alliance. And this is the one that you hear a lot with Dr. Fauci being a part of. 
um, just because he has been on a part of this a part of this group for a while okay but here too it talks about the the, the power of the partnership but what this is, this organization wants to do it's contributing to achievement of the sustainable development goals which what we those were those 17 that we talked about those transforming changes by maximizing the potential of information and communi communication technology their work is one aspect of the of the sustainable development goals and is linked to the impl implication implementation of universal health coverage where NEC is also intensifying its efforts. Universal health coverage, have you ever wondered why there's such a push for that? Here's one of the reasons why. And again, this isn't something off in the distance because actually I was reading in 2019, the ID 2020 started a new digital identity program in collaboration with the government of Bangladesh and the Vaccine Alliance of Gavi. So that's just two organizations that we've talked about. Now the third one is the one that got the patent. What you may or may not have noticed is on the, the very first slide that we put up that we talked about the patent of the um, WO 2020-060606. The, the inventors of it, the three primary inventors, were all um, part of Microsoft. So we're going to look at Microsoft. And what Microsoft does, it talks about um, closing the identity gap in an enormous challenge. It will take the work of many committed people and organizations coming together across different geographies, sectors, and technologies. But it's exciting to imagine a world where a safe and secure digital identities are possible, providing everyone with an essential building block to every right and opportunity that they deserve. And when they talk about this uh, digital identity, they're even saying we need to get it right. But I'm going to say, out of all of this, the, what caught my eye on the little graphic that they have there is in the corner, identity data is outside of individual control. Microsoft is a founder. They are members of the Microsoft team that sit on this ID 2020 advisory committee. And the program to leverage immunizations as an opportunity to establish a digital identity was unveiled by ID2020 in partnership with the Bangladesh government. And as part of this program, they're opening bank accounts for individuals by virtue of biometric identification, using fingerprints, face images, and iris, your eyes, iris images as well. Now, last thing. If you are thinking that, okay, well that's that's Bangladesh, you know, that's over in India. We're we've we've got a little ways on that. Ran across this as well. Welcome the city of Austin to the ID2020 Alliance. And what it says in there basically is since last year's summit, the ID2020 Alliance has been joined by the city of Austin and UC Berkeley. The city of Austin, ID2020, and several other partners are working together with homeless people and the service provider who engage with them to develop blockchain, remember that's that's how they keep the record of things, okay? And you can only keep record of the blockchain things if you're into the cryptocurrency. So they're doing that to develop a blockchain enabled digital identity platform called MyPass, capital M-Y, capital P-A-S-S. -S. Now, One of the reasons that I was um, praying 
earlier to just to just not muddle my way through this because it's one of those things is once you start looking at some of these things it really takes you into so many different directions and you see that there's so many companies that are involved in it and so many other people that are being involved with it we are never going to know all the web that has been woven all the people that are involved we're not going to sit on these boards of these big companies that have these big plans but what we can do is we can study our bible what we can do is be aware of things that are going on what we can do is make sure that you don't take the mark the mark of the beast what that means is as we've been saying for a while now as Christians, get ready, be ready, and be confident. Because remember, our value is not in what the world says our image should be. Our value is in who God says we are. And we can be confident because even as we see these things going on, this is not our real home. Our home is with our Heavenly Father, where there's going to be no more power grab. There's not going to be anything else except healing and wholeness and trust and love. I encourage you to not be like an ostrich and put your head in the sand over things that are happening. At the same time, do not get so overwhelmed with all that's going on that you lose the peace and the joy and the confidence that we have in Christ. I'm going to ask you to join me in a prayer. Heavenly Father, you, you are good. You are holy. Lord, you have written the story. And as children of yours, you have already called us out. Father, you tell us to be in the world, but not of the world. And so, Lord, I pray that as we move forward into these, these times that are just kind of caught us off guard maybe a little bit, I pray, Father, that you help us all to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Help us to see things that are coming on the horizon. But, Lord, let us not get fearful, but, but may it bring to us an urgency of people that we need to reach out to with the truth, with the good news of your word. And may it bring us confidence and reassurance, Lord, that there's so much more to life than the here and now. Father, we do continue to pray for the strength of the, the saints, of the believers, that we may stand strong in times that the ground is kind of shifting underneath us. Lord, we pray for those that are lost, that they may come to know you. Father, we pray for this nation that strong, God-fearing men and women would stand strong. We pray for the lies to continue to be fallen away and removed. And we pray, Father, for a worldwide, not digital imprint, Lord, but a worldwide revival. Lord, we are beyond thankful and grateful that our life is in your hands. So Father, we take a day at a time with great confidence in you. We love you, we thank you, and thank you, Lord, for letting us know ahead of time what was gonna come. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.